how is it going? I hope you're all doing well and having a very nice day. And welcome back to another video on the channel and the first review of the year. I always have a month off at the beginning of the year just because I like to focus on other parts of my life other than reviews, other than the reviews, well, other than filming in general. Uh, but to kickstart the year, I have got a rather large model to review for you now you probably know what it is because you've read the title so i may mean, i'll just crack straight on into it and it is his this the backman class 159 three car dmu setting i know this is a big box but yeah just about managed to get it into shop i've got a slightly new setup if you watched my last review of some running stock uh my desk which i'm at currently now uh, wasn't available so I had to use a temporary setup and it didn't really work so thankfully I've got my desk back and I can get back to doing reviews properly so that you can actually watch um, so yeah Batman class 1 for 9 3 car DMU set and I can't tell you how long I've been wanting a class 159 or 158 so long they are my favorite multiple unit on the British network um, I just think they're so cool looking and sleek and it's in my favorite livery from uh, the time period in network southeast operating out of london waterloo as the uh, destination board says but you'll see that in a moment uh turn the box over so you can read the product code and it is 31520 class 159 three card dmu 159013 br network southeast and you can see this takes a blux 22 dcc decoder and the dcc decoder of choice that i have installed into it is a digital plus lock decoder by lens and it is their silver plux 22 catalog number 10322-01 I like the lens decoders, I find they're very good decoders. I don't always get the decoders, quite often I get some cheap ones, but I thought, you know what, I'm going to spend a bit of money. There was, there was only really two, Bankman and the lens one, and if I remember correctly, I think the lens one was slightly cheaper, but it's still a very good decoder. Lens do make some good decoders. Uh, so yeah, I'll also show you how to uh, DCC chip this. Because it is slightly different, you don't take the body off of it. Uh, you remove a bit of detail on the undercarriage to place a DCC decoder in. It's fairly simple when you get used to it. The pain is getting the blanking chip out, or if you just want to take the DCC decoder out, it's qu quite difficult to get it out. You have to do a little bit of fiddling, fiddling. If you've got fat fingers like me, it's not particularly easy. Uh, on the back of the box, we have some history, which you can't read. <laughs> Hang on, let me uh, just move the camera up. So feel free to pause the video. It's very, very brief. Feel free to pause the video if you want to read that. But without further ado, may as well get into it. There's nothing else on the box. So to make life easier for me, wrong side of the camera. To make the life easier for me, I've labelled the uh, boxes so I know which coach goes in where because certain details I've got in certain ones. So the blanking chip is in the box where the DC decoder carriage goes in. Now I, you can barely see it, but I have it on there. End without first class. You've got, oh, just nudge the camera set up. Hang on a minute. You've got end with first class and this one here says middle car just so i can easily tell so trying to get them out isn't easy so i'm going to take the box oh they've come out the other end okay that was simple <laughs> they are going to fall into my hand very nicely there we go that was a much more simpler and unconventional way of doing it so you get four boxes, but obviously it's only three coaches. So you get a spare box, empty box. So that will come in handy for sure. So first off here, we have the end without the first class. And I believe that's the one with the DCC decoder in it. Yes, it is, because the best way to tell, and this is what it says in the instructions, the end with the number uh, beginning with five, seven, 
is where uh, the decoder is because the end for the first class section has the number beginning with 52. So I may as well start with the with that one, one beginning with 517. Yeah, it's got the DCC decoder in it. And let me just get the camera to focus. Come on, there we go. So, give it a little wiggle and out it comes. So, first off we have the instruction manual. Right here, class, if I can get it properly. Class 158 and 159 diesel multiple units owner's information so you have a welcome page accessories each one comes with different accessories that's the uncoupling tool so this has got a rather neat way of uh, coupling that i quite like it's better than what they used to do on their multiple units where you had that plastic bar with uh, copper wires going through to take the electricity uh through all the coaches for lighting. I'm much more happy with this um, coupling situation, which you'll see again. Uh, lubrication details, opening it up. Talking about, about the coupling. Let me just get this easier for you to read. So you can see, you push them together and you've got the uh, sort of hook here and then you've got the conducting copper uh, parts that stick in kind of like when uh, DCC decoder where the uh, little spikes you could call them or rods go into holes and you got the hook that goes underneath and that tool you slide underneath in the hook twist it it uh, takes the hook out and then you just pull in easy as that chassis light switches uh, here we have the DCC decoder uh, fit in, you remove this piece of detail and the decoder goes underneath there. Very, very simple like that. And on the back we have spare parts and the warranty. So, let's put that down and let's get this out, shall we? As you can see there is the blanking chip. No, I, I always leave the blanking chip in just in case I ever need it. So, just quick look at the blanking chip. It's a standard blanking chip, 22 pins. All you need to know, you've got, here is the uh, uncoupling tool. You can also use a screwdriver if you end up losing this piece, which I have in the past. I will admit I did misplace this, but I did find it again. Uh, but a screwdriver is easily as good. So, detail pack is very, very limited. But then again, the detail on the general model itself is rather good. So, no complaints from there. So, let's take that out of shot. And let's get her out. Like so. And then move that out of shot. And there we go. We have one carriage of the class 159. Now you can't see it that well, but I'm gonna change the camera angle, move it down closer to do some up close shots, and we'll take a look at her in some more detail. So be back right away. So here we are up close, so we can take a look at her in some more detail. I seem to have misplaced the screwdriver I used to pick out and point at the detail. So I'm gonna just gonna use the uncoupling rod. I mean, it works the same. So starting in the top corner here, we have the destination bolt that says London Waterloo. Below it, we have some very fine, separately fitted windscreen wipers on both sides, obviously. The running number 159013 and the headlights down below. On this side, some lovely orange banding, which you don't really notice on this side because the destination bolt sort of cuts it in half, but it is there. You see it much better on that side. Very nice there. No mistakes at all. We got the electric warning sign and we got the Network Southeast logo here, along with the gangway if these two were connected up. And the coupler here, which you, if you were to get, say, two of these three car sets, you can actually couple them up to make a 
a longer rake, which I do quite like. And then you can pretend that these are in use and you've got passages walking through. Moving down, and I just want to point out how immaculate the paint job is. That it's so good. I've been inspecting this for about 10 minutes, trying to see if there's any imperfections, and I can't find any. And I'm very, very happy about that because it's for how expensive it would be, you would hope there wouldn't be any um, mistakes. And that is one thing. I don't mind models being expensive if they're justified and they're worth the expense. If there's sloppy errors and mistakes, I can't agree with the price. So far, this is looking very good. So no mistakes between the yellow and the grey and same here where the grey meets the white the white meets the red the red then meets the white again and then it goes to the blue no mistakes it's so crisp absolutely fantastic that's my phone just going off if you just heard a noise very nice indeed we've got some detail here which i presume are the buttons for opening the doors very nicely picked out and you've got very nicely tinted windows which still allow you to see the interior in there which is very very nice i'm not actually sure which one of these actually has the motor i presume it'd be this one because it's got the dcc decoder in it however when i've got decoders decoders multiple units in the past so my 401 and my 101 one carriage is noticeably heavy. Immediately those models are a few years older than this one, but there's one carriage that's noticeably heavier with the motor in it. However, all the carriages on this feel the same. Now, I presume the motor's in the one with the decoder, but I'm honestly not too sure. If you know for certain, please do let me know because it's something I'm still confused about. Moving on to the bogies, I'm just trying to get a good shot of this where the light is shining hang on focus please so you can see we've got the springs nicely picked out and some other details picked out in a sort of bluey turquoisey that's more blue isn't it color moving along the rest of the bodywork we've got some warning signs underneath here on this part of the undercarriage very nice and the crisp livery continues the whole way along it's just fantastic we've got some more detail down here hang on focus again wow my camera really doesn't want to play ball some more detail picked out here and at the top and some grills as well and moving towards the back we also have another piece of the undercarriage detail picked out in silver here separately fitted very very nice and we have the running number of the carriage 57 zero zero eight eight five more of the detail for the doors and the same detail on the bogies as well very very nice it's not got sort of i'm trying to describe it without it sounding bad it's not got bags of detail but it the, the real the prototype doesn't have a huge amount of parts to uh detail it sounds like i'm digging into this so a good way to justify it is by looking at a steam engine. A steam engine has got a lot more separately fitted parts. A multiple unit doesn't, if that makes any sense possible. I'm hoping that comes across to making sense. So, although there isn't a lot of detail, as in separately fitted, it wouldn't because the general prototype doesn't have that much. The main focal point is the underneath and the undercarriage. And this is the part, by the way, that comes off to reveal the DCC decoder. So, yeah, I hope that made any sense what I just said then. It probably didn't, but hopefully it did. Underneath here, you can see is the switch board for the lights just in there. And moving all the way to the end of the carriage. You can see we've got the exhaust, some more electrical warning signs, the orange band continuing around, and some other information there, and that's obviously the coupling. This side is exactly the same as the other side, so I won't go through it and bore you because it is exactly the same. So let's place that over there, and let's get the middle coach out. 
Now, I'm not going to spend as long as on the other two coaches I did on the original one because it, they're very, very similar. I'll just point out the major differences. So the end here is exactly the same as the other end. Here you can see the other part of the coupler though. There's the hook and there's the metal contacts for carrying electric all the way through for the lighting. As I mentioned, the detail and everything is exactly the same. Just the fact that this is the middle coach. So I'll just give you a quick run by. The only major, major difference is the running number of this particular coach being 5870, even, sorry. But again, yeah, no major differences. Exactly the same. So very, very nice. Again, after about a 10 minute inspection, can't find any imperfections in the livery application, which is just fantastic. You don't want to see mistakes in the application of the livery. So where is the other carriage gone? The other carriage is here. Take a, oh, a bit of paperwork has fallen out of the other end. What does this say? I didn't expect this. Okay, never mind, it's like the bottom collector's club. Never mind. So let's get the other end out. Again, very, very similar. The only major difference is the running number and the fact that this has got the first class compartment at the front here, de designated even by the massive, unmissable yellow stripe. Very easy to notice. Again, nothing different apart from the running number of the coach 52. Double eight five. Same detail all over, nothing different at all. So that is an overview of the detail, I must say. Very, very nice. Although there's not a mass of separately fitted parts because the prototype probably didn't have that many, it's still very, very nice. And the livery application is fantastic. And what separately fitted parts there are. They are very, very nicely done. And also all the small details, all the small printed details are perfect as well. I can't find anything at all wrong with it. No fingerprints, no glue marks, nothing. And actually I didn't even point out on the original one. I've just noticed by taking a close look, look at all the small printing along here. All of these are separate prints. That must have taken absolutely ages. Such good attention to detail on this. I tell you, if I try to see if I can get it to focus properly and maybe zoom in, I doubt you'll be able to understand what they say. Hang on, let me just zoom in. They probably won't understand what they say, but the attention to detail there is just fantastic. So impressive, all of these small bits of detail. Hang on, and now the camera won't sit still. Oh, wonderful. Right. Let me put that down and get the camera to sit still. Very, very fantastic attention to detail by Bankman. Really, really good. But now I'm going to put the other two coaches out of uh, shot and I'll show you how to fit the DTC decoder. So here we have the front coach again designated you know it's the dcc decoder one because it says 57 and then the rest of the running number that's how you know so as i mentioned the piece of detail that you remove is this now it can be a bit fiddly because you've got to get your thumb i'm also gonna i'm tr thing is this is gonna make it even more difficult trying to get it in shot but it's quite simple you squeeze the sides and then you have to do a bit of wiggling and moving it is rather awkward but there we go it just comes off and there's the dcc decoder snugly fitted in there no removal of the body no damaging the body when trying to remove it because quite often uh, in the past with their multiple units to take the body off backman have used clips and i don't like clips to keep a body on i prefer conventional screws admittedly on a multiple unit clips is the better option because screws aren't really the best way to keep a body on but i always fear that when i'm trying to unclip the bodies i'm going to scratch it and i hate doing it so very simple just to remove this small piece of undercarriage detail 
just by squeezing it at the sides and it should pop out so i'll just fit it back in again so yeah very very simple on how to remove the piece of detail you just put it back in and then it clicks back into place very very simple so now let me grab the other coach and i'll just quickly demonstrate the coupling uh, where's the middle coach gone there it is so make sure you get the end it's matched up again trying to do this in shot is a bit awkward but if i just bring that there and bring that there quite simple make sure the pins are lined up together and then it's probably better if i do it like that so you can see there's a little gap oh, where the hook goes into you just push them up together and the hook slots in there and then they're together and to get it unhooked or uncoupled you take the uncoupling hook i'm probably gonna have to stand up to do this just to get a better angle give me a second so then you get that slide it in there give it a little twist just to remove the hook and then you just pull them apart like so very gently don't need to use too much force because you don't want to break them and that's how you couple and uncouple very very nice way of doing it i think much better than the original way when they had those small plastic uh connectors but without further ado i think with everything let's head down to the railway and see how she performs so i'll be back with you in a couple of seconds so here we are down at the railway, still covered in snow. I'm going to leave the fake snow on here until about the end of February because that's when winter ends and then it'll be returning back to normal. But here we are with the model down on the tracks. Uh, but before I get it tested, I just want to mention something I experienced with this. So I mentioned how I got this in September, uh, but I couldn't run until I got to the, the decoder. And obviously when I bought this in September, I looked over the model just to make sure nothing was missing, anything, make sure anything was broken, um, because I couldn't run it. I didn't place it on the track, I didn't look at the wheels at all. Um, so fast forward to about December, when I uh, got the decoder, I fitted it, started running it, and it just kept derailing constantly. So I emailed the Rails of Sheffield, in fact, no, tell a lie. I had a look at the bogies and I could see that the wheels were wonky. I'll overlay some pictures on screen that I took and a video of it running, but you can basically see that the uh, wheels had one side of them had popped out of the axle boxes and the bogey housing. And so I emailed Fraser the Chef and they said that this has been that they've seen this with loads of other models and it's down to the packaging, which is slightly annoying because you'd think Pacman would pay attention to the packaging and make sure it didn't cause the wheels to pop out but they told me how to fix it and it, it was a very simple fix not difficult at all all you have to do is just uh, slightly pry the uh, casing of the bogies away and just put the bogey or the wheel set back into the right position and it's done it was the front bogey of the front carriage, and it was also the first bogey on the middle carriage, I think, that was out of alignment and wonky. So it's a very simple fix, but just if you get one of these, and make sure they're not out of position because they, like Rails, like I said, Rails and Sheffield told me that this had been known to happen before. So just check when you buy one of these to make sure the wheels aren't wonky. But without further ado, let's get it uh, tested. So I'm going to start off doing my usual test of first off going over the points at a slow crawl to see if it will cut out on anywhere. And then I'll do the uh, over the points just to make sure it won't derail over the points. And I just realised my camera setup is hanging over the uh, inside track. So I'd have to move the camera setup to do that test, which I will do. But let's just start off with the slow speed test. So I'm just slowly nudging the controller up. And there we go, it's off. Now it does make a bit of a noise. The motor isn't particularly quiet, but 
can't get it any slower. Yep. There we go. That is as slow as it will go. And that's actually really impressive. I do believe this has got a five pole motor. Not sure about flywheels, uh, but it seems to be doing a very, very good performance. Just coming onto the points now, see if it will cut out at all. Very, very smooth. Very lovely, slow and smooth. Very nice. So it can clearly do a good crawl. Let's speed it up a bit. Very smooth as well. Really, really smooth. And you can hear the motor a tad noisy, but it's not ear deafening. <laughs> so uh, let's put it into reverse. Have it go back over. Right, and now let's do the manoeuvrability test. I'll just quickly reposition the camera just so it doesn't hit the train or the train doesn't hit it when it goes through the points. So I'll just quickly do a quick cut and then we'll be back for the manoeuvrability test. There we go. Camera setup is not in the way of the inside track. So let's switch the points and get it moving nice slow speed through there not i'm not going to do as cruel because we don't want to be here all day but let's just see how it does maneuvering these points because the uh, coaches are quite long each but it seems to be doing really rather well no issues whatsoever nice and smooth no cutting out no derailing. Let's try and reverse at the same speed. Yeah, very nice. Very smooth in either direction. Good slow speed, good manoeuvring, no derailments. Very, very good. Very impressive. Five star performance at the moment. Let's hope that continues. Right. Let's switch the points back. And let's get it going. So now, as always, like I usually do, I'm going to get it running at a moderate speed, and then I'm going to get some shots of it running around the layout, various different alternative angles with some music to play over it. So I hope you enjoy the next couple of minutes.
showing the 159 going around at some different angles with some music. But before I conclude the video, here are my ratings for the fabulous Backman Class 159 DMU. So here are my ratings for the fabulous Batman Class 159. Starting off with detail, 5 stars. Now the main thing about this is the livery. Four different colours make up the Network Southeast livery and all of them are perfect. On all three carriages I couldn't find a single imperfection. Absolutely fantastic. The other two stars are made up from the printed detail. I showed you on the side of the body shell, on the little grey bit down the bottom, those small bits of printed detail absolutely fantastic that they've got all those small bits of detail and the fifth star is for the separately fitted parts and there's not a huge amount of separately fitted parts because obviously the prototype didn't have that many either the main points of interest are the windscreen wipers the exhaust at the end of each coach and also on the top which i don't think i showed in the review small little handrails very fine very nice and it also has a fully modeled interior as well which is very nice to see Moving on to the performance, and again, it's five stars. Now, it didn't derail after I fixed the wheels. And the reason I'm not taking a star off for this is because the majority of models will be fine. There's just a few, like Rails of Sheffield said to me um, via email, there's just a few that end up having this issue because of the packaging. Not all of them have it. It's not a standard issue with every single model. So I don't think it's really valid taking a star off because I could have got a completely different model and it would have been fine. So I'm going to stick it at five stars. So it didn't derail when I fixed the wheels. It also had a great slow speed. It manoeuvred fantastic. It was very smooth and it didn't cut out at all. Moving on to the mechanism. I like the detail and performance. It is rather good. However, I have had to dock one star and I'll get to that in a moment. But it has all wheel pickup. That's eight wheels per coach, 24 wheels on the whole set. Really, really nice. It has metal bearings on all of the axles. It also has two motors, hence why when I mentioned earlier that I couldn't tell which one had the motor in because both of them have motors in and the two motors power the inner bogies of the end cars. They both have flywheels on them. However, the issue I have, and here's why I docked the star, is they are three pole motors. Bit of a shame because I would have preferred five pole motors, but maybe they decided to go with two three pole motors instead of one five pole motor. Not too sure, but maybe two five pole motors would have been even better. It also has the electrical current going all the way through. Really, really nice. Mechanically speaking, it is really, really good. However, with value, it does go down, sadly, quite a bit. So, hold on to your hats, or hold on to anything near you. The RRP for the Batman Class 159 is... £399.95. 5p of £400. Ouch. If you were to round it up to £400, that would work out to 133.3333333 etc etc pounds per coach yes they all pick up power and they have metal bearings yes which most general rolling stock do have one of them or two of them have motors so i guess the only proper coach really is the inner coach but even with the picking up power and the lights 133 if you work it out per coach, that is quite a lot. However, if you want to get one of these, retailers have them at very good prices. So Curlow Model Rail Centre have nine in stock at £271.99, which saves over £100 off the RRP. Or, whereas a Sheffield have some available at £269.95, which also saves you over £100 off the RRP. So... Definitely go to the retailers. It's, I mean, generally you should go to retailers anyway because you get it cheaper. But this certainly, because over £100 off, that's a drastic difference. Now, mine was 250 from as a Sheffield because it was pre owned. The one I just showed you isn't pre owned, but still, 270 
compared to the RRP of basically 400. So, so much better. But overall, that gives it a very respectable score of 17 out of 20. Only three off full marks. But now, let's get on and conclude the video. Well, I think Backman have done a fantastic job with the Class 159. It's quickly become one of my firm favourites in the collection. Let me know what you thought of it and what you would rate it, what you thought of my ratings as well. But for now, that is the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. It is greatly appreciated. Feel free to leave a like and feel free to subscribe if you want to. New videos will be coming out very soon. But for now, that is me signing out and I'll see you down the line very, very soon. Take care, buddy. Bye for now. Oh,